we have a Brian Kilmeade and what he thinks Biden needs to do to get people to get vaccinated. And usually people go to doctors for their personal medical. For example, now there's gonna be a shot available for kids five and up. I don't want a politician telling me what to do with a five-year-old. That should be parent and pediatrician. I'm sure you agree with that. And also, when the President of the United States is losing patients, he's losing patients with PhDs. They are one of the largest section of people who aren't getting the shot, medical workers, as well as African Americans, because only four of 10 have gotten the shot. Why doesn't the President call out African Americans who put him in office and yell at them to get the shot? Francesca, thoughts? I'm sorry, what? What? <laughs> I'm I'm totally lost. Losing PhDs. I think he's implying that when you break down vaccine hesitancy by education, he's saying that PhDs are less likely to want to get vaccinated. I don't know. I, I haven't seen that. Um, I would say though, regardless of which group you're talking about, whether it's the PhDs or the black Americans that put him in office, um, he has been encouraging people to get vaccinated literally all year. Oh, By the way, uh, all of those groups would be affected uh, potentially by the vaccine mandate. So isn't he doing what Kilmeade wants him to do? He's encouraging all of those groups, yeah. whether his base or not to get vaccinated. He did it rhetorically for months and months and months. Try to make all the resources available for it. And now we in fact is pushing for it to be mandated for at least some chunk of Americans. Yeah, I mean, and there's also a lot of racism obviously embedded in that, you know, because Kilmeade is basically, you know, pointing out that African Americans are more vaccine hesitant. And we know that based on like histories of uh, literal experiments being run on the black community using vaccines and, and other so called remedies. Um, but Biden has deliberately reached out to those communities. Now, how effective that has been, I don't know, but he has made it a point to reach out to specifically black and Latino communities um, and, and bring vaccinations to them. Which of course, they're all decrying as like, hey, they're gonna knock on my door and they're gonna come, you know, and and like violate my property, like step on my property, blah, blah, blah. So, but again, it doesn't die, right? Because if you can, if you could, oh, if you can blame black Americans for anything. Fox News will absolutely yeah. take that. Yeah, yeah, he's not happy with Biden taking actions that result in more black Americans getting vaccinated. He wants him to yell at black Americans using the word black. That's what he wants. Um, so sorry, kill me. I don't think you're gonna get what you want there. Um, but anyway, uh, wh what I would suggest to kill me is you might wanna be a little bit more worried about the people watching your show. Because they've looked at a study of COVID cases nationally, breaking down states and analyzing based on the vote share that Trump got in the election. Of the 23 states with a total of new COVID-19 cases per capita surpassing the national rate, 21 of 23 voted for Trump. 14 of the 18 states with new death totals higher than the national average backed the former president in 2020. So. Clearly, this is a thing that is being influenced by politics. And nobody gets to be surprised by those results. Everyone in right wing media has been working harder than they've ever worked before to convince every conservative in America to not care about this thing in every way that they can not care in terms of their behavior, in terms of their masking, willingness to get vaccinated, all of it. Take any anger you have over the pandemic and Turn it on random Asian people you see walking around the streets. That's all they've done for a year, and this is the result of it. More cases, more deaths than there needed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Are we gonna? Are we doing the the Trump states story, yes. John? We, we're okay. talking about it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like again, we've been asking ourselves this this entire time, which is what is the end game here? You know, now you're seeing deaths among children. I read. The story of the of the woman whose whose grandkids passed away, right? Four years oh. old, and you're just like it breaks your heart. I mean, I'm not immune to that. And like you know, they're being trolled, which is awful. And like no one in their right minds. And God, I hope that like you and I, as I'm like, you know, we've talked about this a lot. It's like no one is relishing in these deaths. But man, this is a lesson. Take the L. You know, these governors, look. Here's the thing about these governors, in my opinion, and a lot of these red states, is that they know they're screwing up. They know that they have doubled and tripled down 
on a, a MAGA anti-vax, anti-science message. And that because it's been politicized since day one and they've got, they cannot lose that voter base, but they are yeah. literally, quite literally losing that voter base. The problem is, is that they're they're going to be facing backlash from their own constituents who may be Republican. Like mm. just watch, wait and watch and wait and see. But their only only leg they have to stand on is punching against Biden. Oh, the vaccine mandates. Oh, you know, uh, Fauci. Oh, the CDC. Like that's all they've got. But ironically, it's also their mishandling of COVID that is probably going to mean their undoing. Like I, I once hope. again, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what is in store for 2022 in terms of the midterms. But I do know that like. In my opinion, the the landscape strategically is ripe for a Republican who actually believes in science to come up and actually and and like say, no, I don't I don't like Biden or whatever, but I do believe in protecting you and your family. You know, yeah, just wide I, open. Look, I I would love that to be true. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't I don't see any of those rising up just yet, but. Maybe, be. Um, yeah. The 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 thing about the the deaths and uh, you know, there's people dying everywhere, but obviously more dying in red states and more conservatives are dying. It's sort of horrific in two ways. One, in terms of the sheer numbers. I mean, you know, we memorialize 9/11 for the loss of life. Well, okay, every two and a half days we're losing that many people, so yes. it's horrific in terms of the numbers. But it's also horrific that clearly. The right has made the decision that not enough of their people are dying for them to care. Like they, they they see the numbers, they know that their people are more likely to die, but it's not enough to make them lose elections. If it was, I think that they would be scared. If if you were gonna lose states because so many conservatives had needlessly kicked off, I think that they then might care about it. They've made a calculus. It's like it's like the calculus for the recalls in Fight Club. It's like they just weigh the numbers, which is gonna be worse for us. And they don't mind hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of conservatives dying needlessly every day. Yes, and but but that is such a perfect example. You know, you're talking about like extreme capitalism and being like, oh, it's okay if a bunch of people die in this, you know, car we should have recalled. But that's exactly yeah. what conservative ideology is, and to an extent, a lot of democratic ideology, right? Like always making the bet on money and the markets over human lives, right? And we on the left have always said people over profits, and that couldn't be, you know, more true than right now. But you mm -hmm. you get it. It's sort of like the conservative ideology, which is well, as long as I have. Money, Money, I'm fine. Well, as long as you know um, my daughter isn't gay, then I'm against gay marriage. But until that happens to me, but until I lose my home in a flood, but until I, you know, then I believe in climate change. It's like it's always until it happens to me. And, it, and man, if fate can strike so close to you and you still won't learn your lesson, yeah. and that is the conservative ideology. It is we don't even live in a society, right? Like yeah. what society? Why society? It's the McCloskey. As long as I'm poorly holding my gun on my giant mansion, <laughs> nothing can get to me, right? And and you know, to be honest with you, there's a certain level like Kilmead is an idiot, but he is he's kind of being consistent with how he was before the vaccine rollout, which was like, hey, it's about personal choice, it's about personal freedom. And if they're gonna die, so what? He's actually talking about death where like no other conservative commentators even really mention the yeah. massive numbers of death and people are, are, are dead folks. Now, the devastating toll that you're mentioning, the fact that it's so egregious that we as a nation, like. When Biden came into the power and he did that whole like floaty, you know, like lights on a whatever, there were like a bunch of tea lights and they were beautiful. And mm. then he like released them onto the Washington Mall. I got kind of emotional because I had realized that for a year, nobody was, everyone was gaslighting us about the amount of death and nobody was being honest. And imagine mm. you're losing loved ones now. I mean, it's it's such a slap in the face. But anyway, um, yeah, I've lost my train of thought, sir. Well, it was a great train while it lasted. Thank no, you. And you're totally right. Yeah, they don't. The only death they acknowledge is, you know, unconfirmed stuff they saw on VARES. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.